you for tuning in to another edition of the Vulcan Report. This end of day report is for trading on Tuesday, July the 26th, 2016. Taking a look first at Microsoft. As you can see, Microsoft is still bullish, locking in an upward trend. However, we still have to contend with this gap that was established on July the 20th, 2016. Right now, the market is well supported at 5508. But I do suspect the 5508 will be tested at least, if not taken out temporarily, in an effort, in, excuse me, in an effort to fill in this gap. Uh, so that's what we're looking at going forward. But once that is done, then 58 uh, and 59 would be in play, um, possibly by the end of next week. No, actually, let's give it. We're gonna have to give it two weeks only because of the FOMC tomorrow so that's going to delay us by a day or two so I'll give it two weeks so upward targets gonna be about 60 but you gotta give it two weeks that's that's just how I see it uh, going forward right now in Microsoft alright looking now at Mickey D's Mickey D's is getting punished nice gap down here nice nice gap down we're now uh, in the beginning stages of a negative pulse wave market is an oversold territory but but the way this thing gapped down it could lock in uh, this downtrend it could lock in the only thing you gotta look at though is this gaps gonna have to be filled so at some point it's gonna need to be filled you know I don't know if it'll do it this week or not not closing near the lows today but uh, we are st we are now in an established downtrend. Look at this volume here. That's a big deal. Um, you know, you could reverse too on 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 a just like you did here. So anything's possible. But you got to go by the price action right now. The price action is mad bearish, and you have upward resistance, overhead resistance at 128.60 right here. Uh, so nothing bullish on this chart. That pattern has uh, been broken, and you can see the trend lines here is trying to cross down. Uh, so you're going to reestablish this this downtrend is what the market's trying to do. It tried to break out of this trend, but that's the problem when you do things underneath the Kumo cloud. It bumped its head here, you know, it's bumping its head here, and this right here, the Kumo cloud serves to push prices down. So at this rate and speed this low back here could be tested you know quick fast in a hurry so right now um, this mark is looking bearish but it's in an old so uh, position and we have a gap to contend with so this thing could do anything and not to mention tomorrow's FOMC so you could get a knee-jerk reaction anything's possible we'll have to wait and see all right, take a look at Walmart. Walmart uh, is in a bullish position overall, but price action is flat. Absolutely no conviction one way or the other and getting very dangerously close to a negative pulse wave situation. All right, uh, prices breaking below 73.21 is problematic because then that would open up the floodgate to the trend line at 71.69. And then you got an air pocket from there to that, uh, I want to say, $69, $68, $69 uh, price support at the top of the Kumo cloud. So if it wants to maintain this overall bullish stance, it's going to have to uh, come with it and get some kind of momentum in play. Because right now, it's not looking too hot. Now, looking at the weekly... As you can see, it finally broke out of the Kumo cloud, but it's not really breaking up and out of it. It's just out of it, but it's not upward trajectory. Barely bullish momentum and very light volume so far, but the market is uh, well supported at the $70.09 um, price target. So mm, we'll have to see what happens on this one. But right now, uh, it's still in a bullish situation. 75 looks to be in play before before you get any kind of correction if you're going to get one at all it's just flat momentum's flat um, really no conviction really no selling pressure coming in and it's just 
everyone's just looking at it and going, eh, this market's not doing anything, they could care less. Alright, looking at Google so far, still in a negative pulse wave, trying to get something going here at $750.22, uh, break above that would do it. It's going to need to do that in order to be in play on the bull side, even though it's in a overall bullish position, you're just trading in a long-term trading range with really no no conviction either way. Every time you test this trend line, you bounce right off of it. Got close to testing it here, back you know here. So it's just not really doing a lot uh, right now. Overbought, trying to come off of that. Who knows? Uh, right now, I would say that uh, this market is in a negative pulse wave. Okay, and it's just. It's not trending. It's in a bullish trend, but it's not trending. It's not doing anything. It's not hitting new highs. Um, you know, not really hitting new lows either. Not with any conviction. Um, you can make an argument that you hit one here, but again, there's no conviction. You reversed the following week, and then you're here. So, just a lot of just a lot of no conviction in these markets lately. All right, looking at Apple. Uh, Apple. As you can see here, close at $96.67. And that's where we close it. And then after the earnings report, uh, the market traded up to $103.58. And it's currently trading at 103.11. So the market has managed now to get above the pulse wave of 101, trading back above 100, back above par. But it's going to have to continue with this Kumo, uh, this uh, long-term trend line of 103.78, and then it's going to have to continue with the bottom of the Kumo cloud here around the 107 price handle. So it still has a lot to make up for, uh, depending on where things are going to open and handle tomorrow with the FOMC. Can it stay above 100? Uh, right now, it has more downside that it can go based on this position. So you were in a technical negative pulse wave scenario right and now depending on how this thing opens and deals with tomorrow we're gonna open we're gonna be gap way up here all right so it's gonna be up here possibly tomorrow still below the Kumo cloud I mean yeah still below the Kumo cloud still below the long-term trend line but trying to pulse wave could be a bear trap though so you know tomorrow's that big caveat anything goes who knows what's gonna happen all right, next in line is Facebook. Facebook is getting ready to do some things, too, so we'll see. I believe they report tomorrow after the bell, I believe. Um, but here we are. We're in a uh, positive post wave situation right now after turning from a negative one. Market did, uh, you know, try to break out when it hit the 120.57 mark. And now here you are at 121.22, so it's just waiting. It's locked in a bullish situation. But let's see here. All right, but on the daily chart, you can see here uh, it's, in a, it's in a more pronounced bullish pulse wave, but it's sideways, okay? So, and momentum is flat. Not a lot of conviction either way ahead of its earnings and what have you. But the market is well supported at 117.78 on the daily. So, here we go back to long-term chart, and this is where we are. So, uh, if I had to take a guess I'd say it's gonna explode higher I think it wants to uh, it wants to at least bump its head on the 130 before you see any kind of real correction in this market alright looking at Netflix Netflix you know trying to bounce off of that last week's low still in a negative pulse wave scenario still in a well-defined downtrend situation but no conviction to the to the to the uh, downside here you know all we're doing is testing this uh, this support line here bouncing off support moving sideways but you know in a bearish type of a pattern I think it will accelerate possibly to the downside it's just hard to know uh, got massive of resistance up here at the 9984 level so and that 9984 is in the Kumo cloud on top of that so yeah this is gonna be tough Netflix is gonna have to come with something um, you know, I think for one thing, they need to just do away with the whole, um, you know, DVD thing that's so, you know, last two decades ago. Yeah, that's so blockbuster. You know, Arrow's video. You know, it's all about 
digital downloading now and, and online streaming of things. Uh, so I don't I don't understand, um, you know, why some things are only in DVD and not download. They need to have their entire catalog as as online streaming. That's what they're going to need to do, so that you can watch stuff right then and there, and not have to continue with a DVD at a time. You know, what if you want to binge watch? You can't do that with a DVD. So I I don't know. Uh, I I think they need to do a lot more than what they're doing and right now uh, a lot of things too they don't have online you can't watch it you can go to um what's that other thing I can't think of the name of it right now I just remember the color green it has something to do with green uh, anyway you it used to be free you still have some free stuff on there and um, but then they, they they changed to a pay thing you all know what I'm talking about I can't think of the name of it but so I've seen it where they have some TV shows and stuff on there you can watch, but Netflix don't have it, and that doesn't make any sense to me. So I think Netflix is the big boy on the block, and he needs to, uh, you know, have more content, have more shows. I mean, I don't see why they can't get everything on there. You know, whoever will license to them, let you know, let them stream it. I don't, I don't see why not. I mean, it's just, I don't know. That's just me. So anyway, this one's this this thing's a dead horse too. All right, looking at the uh, the Nasdaq 100, the QQQ, you can see this one is pulse waving positive, gaining a little bit of strength. And the uh, today we closed at 113.79, and in the overnight market uh, we hit 114.50, and that's where we closed, and that's pretty powerful. So this one is expanding higher, trending higher looks gorgeous uh, on the long-term chart and switching over here to the daily chart markets well supported on a daily at 112 28 uh, don't want to see closes below that because if the price trades below that then that's going to set up a correction phase and then that could push it down to the trend line down here at 109 40 all right so quite a ways to fall if that happens so got to be on guard and, and watch out for that all right, looking at the S&P 500, uh, this one does not look to be as strong as the NASDAQ 100. Uh, closing out at 216.75 today. And, um, you know, not, not a whole lot to write home about. Overnight, closing at 217.01. And this market is supported at 214.84. You don't want to see prices uh, break that. Because then the trend line for this one is down at 210.51. So definitely got to watch that as well. All right, taking a quick look at bonds. Bonds on the daily is in a negative pulse wave scenario. Overhead resistance is at 140.89. And you got your trend line down here at 136.32. And that looks like that's probably where it's going to end up hitting and getting itself into this Kumo cloud unless the Fed can say something sexy tomorrow I don't know um, they're not gonna let this thing you know correct but so much so don't get it twisted but as of right now you know it has fallen from grace from 143.62 to the present so if anything I'm gonna say that people are keeping their powder dry and waiting for the next breakout um, we'll probably see a scenario like this where gaps and then gaps and you know we're just filling gaps right now and technically speaking the gap has been filled we have filled this gap here from the uh, July 5th and we've now filled the gap from June 27th so both of those have been filled we just have one more to continue with and that's now the gap from June 24th so gonna have to deal with that all right so we could get one more, and that put us to the to the, the trend line too. That put us right to the trend line. So we'll probably you know nip it, get somewhere within it, between the air pocket, the trend line, and the top of the Kumo cloud before bouncing back up again. So that would be my guess here. So that bodes well for equities to continue to rise. Um, possibly tomorrow they'll probably get a good shot in the arm from the Fed tomorrow. Looking at our real estate here, ticker symbol IYR. Uh, this one's getting dangerously close to that uh, 8433. If that is taking out, um, then you're probably you're probably going to see a nice little correction. 
and really I want to say 8409 really so 8409 if that's taken out then you're gonna get 8330 is the first stop and then 8095 is the second stop so I think we're gonna probably hit that and then it'll, it'll, it'll bounce around but right now this one is looking um, looking a little tired up here see the negative momentum picking up not oversold yet so it could still correct some more before going higher I just don't see this thing stopping anytime soon overall though all right uh, last but not least looking at the US dollar ticker symbol UUP and you can see this one is just as strong as ever and it's well supported down here at twenty four dollars and eighty two cents and I'll end it with this I do not see the US dollar or the IYR or the TLT going down anytime soon and I also will say the same thing for the SPY and the Q QQQ I don't see those markets going down anytime soon the the Fed just won't let it happen they can't let it happen so I say these uh, these shares to the moon overall these shares to the moon every pullback is going to be seen as an opportunity to go long and everything the dollar uh, stocks you name it the real estate one the even the bonds don't ask me how they do it they just do it so with that said remember bulls make money bears make money and pigs get slaughtered so take what you can give nothing back